Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pseudo Write 201. Um, this is going to be a continuation of yesterday. Um, I'm going to share this document with you. It's the same document we've been working on. It's the story that this, it's the idea that a guy, he his musical instrument basically is cursed and it causes people who listen to it to feel the same emotions that he is feeling when he plays. Um, so, and then it makes him famous, but at the same time, it's also a curse. So he's trying to break that curse. I kind of thought it was a fun story idea. So that's kind of what we've been working with in Pseudorite. Um, you can use this document. Um, I've been filling it out as we go. Um, today, we're going to be working within the story Bible. So when you come over and open your Pseudorite, um, here's all the documents that you have. We've been working in this one. Um, today we're going to work in Story Bible. Um, so these are the two documents that we had going. This one was first draft, and then this one was just kind of the notes that we had been taking um, on from chat um, when we asked chat questions. Um, Story Bible is down towards the bottom on the very left sidebar. Um, to toggle it on, you just click that, and, and if you don't want to work in Story Bible, you can always toggle that off. Um, in this, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you all the different boxes. So brain dump, um, everything you know about your story is what you put in your brain dump. It affects your synopsis and your beats. Your synopsis is gonna be an overview of your entire story, beginning, middle, and end. And your beats are what comes, uh, is the outline that comes for each chapter. So when we get to that section on beats, um, I'll show you, but it is, this section does affect that synopsis and the beats. Um, I'm going to sh also share this document with you, which is the beginner's guide. Um, this one is all of my information on like tips and tricks in using Pseudorite. And um, I also included in this one um, an entire section just dedicated to Story Bible. So we're going to actually go to that. I'm going to show you this in it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this also has uh, a great uh, diagram that kind of shows you what affects what. So like brain dump, it's showing you here, affects the synopsis and affects those beats. Um, so going back into Pseudorite, um, since this is all I really know about the story, and I, this is kind of my idea of the story, I, cut, I just put that in brain dump. If you have settings you know you want included, characters you want included, um, um, like genre information, if you have more to your story that you know, include that in the brain dump because it does affect your synopsis and the beats. Um, next, genre. So for this one, I, I would, you would probably want to put it under science fiction when, because it is about a cursed object or fantasy. Um, I can tell you now that working with AI if you include sci-fi in it, it also sometimes tries to include alien or portals and stuff like that. So you may want to watch your wording since even though it's a cursed object, it even though it would fit in that genre in like posting it in Amazon or, or Barnes and Noble or any of those other, you know, any of those Goodreads and stuff like that, any of those other places that you post your book, it might not necessarily work when working with an AI, you don't want that <clears throat> cursed object to suddenly be, you know, put here by aliens. Well, I mean, unless you do, unless that's your plan. So just watch when you do your genre. Um, it does affect your outline beats and your prose. Um, your outline is at the bottom. Your outline is the overview of your entire novel and your um, Beats, again, is what's going to be basically your breakdown per chapter. And then your prose is the actual writing of the chapter itself. So if we go in here, um, brain dump, I gave you just some ideas, getting started, any of your world building, um, adapting the brain dump. So don't be afraid to change the brain dump as you go, um, such as if you learn more. Um, I find that when I'm working in these boxes, like suddenly, it, suddenly like if I generate my synopsis, Suddenly it'll give me more ideas. So you can always put those that additional information back into your brain dump. Um, 
And then this is just some information that you may want to add, you know, maybe your premise, any details, characters, plot points, themes and messages that you may have, any conflicts. I list all of them here. You can read all of that in that documentation. I'm not going to go over everything because um, Story Bible is a lot to cover. So I just want to make sure we can touch on as much of it as we can throughout the hour. But hey, yeah, Debbie, read through this. Quick, yes. Quick, quick, quick question on that. In my experience playing with Brain Dump, and I probably sure. took the name a little too seriously, um, as you noted, there's a ton of op options for what you can include there. What I kept yes. finding is I would go wild, and then that 2,000 words limit would be like, Pfft. so out of the yeah. things in this list, with only the 2,000 word limit, is there any that you would say are, like, if I, if I can only choose one or two from that list that you think are particularly give a lot of punch that are worth putting in brain dump as opposed to other places? Sure, Sarah. And actually that's a really great question. Um, we actually talk about this a lot in, in our more extensive and advanced classes. Um, what you may want to do is now include in your brain dump because it does affect your beats. Um, put specifically what's important to that chapter within that brain dump, if that makes sense. So if you have certain characters and stuff, obviously there's a character's box. Oh, so, so you, like when I know. do chapter three, go change my brain dump to what matters for chapter three. And then when I do chapter yes. four, I can switch it up again. Exactly. exactly. Oh, that's clever. Thank you. So don't, yeah, don't feel like your brain dump can't be changed. So like, if you're, you're like, obviously your opening chapter is not going to be like any of the other chapters. Usually your first chapter is that like your original, like, the character in their actual just origin world. So <clears throat> so it's them at their mundane, their mundane job. It's them going through, the, you know, think they're in a happy, loving relationship. It's them in their, their, their usual world and their usual life is usually your chapter one. Include all that information in your brain dump for chapter one. So if you have a huge extensive detail, especially if you're writing extensive, like a fantasy, an epic fantasy or science fiction, your world building is, could be huge. And so all that information needs to be known. Um, then after that happens, and like, let's say you get into a fantasy and then they get pushed into a different world, is starting in chapter two. Then change your brain dump to that world. Change your characters to the characters that are needed within. Because I do, you do, yeah. The limitations of these words do like they hinder at some point and i don't want you guys to feel limited by those number or by the yeah the, the the numbers of those words that are there so you know adapt now they are currently working on a, a characters a better characters box they're working on world building boxes um they're also looking at increasing the number of words you can put in each of these boxes um but for now, like um, I say for now, since this is the setup now, um, until all of those go, all of those are implemented, change each one of these boxes as needed. That's that brilliant. Question, this whole class okay. just, just paid for my hour of time. Thank you so much. That was a really great answer. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, so, um, but um, so for me, like all I know right now for my story is this is all I, I know right now. It's just a blank story idea. Basically this, he wants to be famous, gets a cursed instrument, you know? So obviously I don't know a lot about it now. So, and that's a great way to start. Um, you know, you don't have to know a lot about your story. Um, for next is genre. Um, again, I put with the box effect, um, picking your genre. So, you know, you always have a main core genre. So um, that's usually, you know, like your romance, your mysteries, your science fiction, um, your literature, all of those, like that's your main core genre. Now, after you go with that, you may also have some subgenres with that. So like, let's say this one, mainly I want it to be like a modern story that has just touches of fantasy because it's about a cursed object. So it's my main genre though, is about this man. He just wants to be a famous musician. So to him, it's more of an internal struggle. So that doesn't necessarily mean that my core genre is fantasy. It just has fantasy elements. But those are all things, those subgenres are things you can add in. So you can add in that fantasy 
um, and then I can put in um, that modern story um, contemporary um, things like that um, you know and then in that secondary information um, you can also put in you know tones and moods tropes and stuff like that within your genre any themes that you have you can also include those in your genre um, again I included a lot of just ideas of what you want remember you are limited to that 40 word count um, I have learned and so, and and maybe Manon and Lynn can jump in on this. I have learned that if you keep your genre and style box a little bit more minimal, the AI seems to do a little bit better. Um, what do you think, Manon? I agree. I agree. Some of the box, we have to keep them at the minimum, and then the AI do re respond a lot better. When it's too full, it seems like it's going all over the place. I'm not sure what you want, but I'm going to try to give you it. Yeah. Um, how about you, Lynn? I might have lost Lynn. <laughs> um, remember, the more you include, so like in here, like style. I like to I I, I like to write um, in both third and um, first person point of views. We'll just make this one the third person. Um, I always like to include that in the style. Again, that's I have that in within the style. Um, you can always check. So let's say like. This box affects your beats and prose. Within pseudo write that little question mark that's next to your style box. You can also see where it affects. It also gives you your word tone. So your genre, <clears throat> this is the best way I can describe it to you guys. Your genre is is how your story is going to be written. It's going to be written like a science fiction fantasy modern contemporary novel. That's how it's going to be written. Okay, your style box is the style it's going to be written in so if you want a more like let's say i and i i think i put examples in here i didn't um but sort of in the pacing and rhythm so like if you want a more ambient slow burn sort of story that is where you're going to put it in the style box so if you want it to feel more ambient and slow if you want it more fast paced and action-packed if you want it more romantic and sensual if you want it violent that's where you would include it is in the style box so let's say i want this one to be more ambient um maybe i want a little bit of humor in there um things like that um if you include like humor remember it's AI is not exactly good with humor. It tries, um, but it helps too if you're more specific. Like if you want it filled with dad jokes, I'm not gonna lie, AI is really good with dad jokes. Um, if you want it to be more tricksterish, if you want it to be more sarcastic, those are our things in. So if let's say I want a more sarcastic humor throughout the story, you know, that's what I can put. Again, your genre and style can change. So let's say you're writing a horror novel. And you want that bloody descriptions of gore throughout your story, but you're in chapter one, and this is just the this is just the part where all of the friends are meeting up before they start on their road trip. That's going to end bad. Okay, if you put in here um, that bloody descriptions of gore, even though it's just chapter one and there's not supposed to be any violence yet, if you put that in your style box, somehow the AI will try to include bloody descriptions of gore. So make sure that you have that in your style box. Make sure your style box. So if you're like, if you're trying to figure out as you're generating your chapters, why is it generating like this? Why does the, why, why is there suddenly violence? Check your genre and style box because that could be where it's coming from. So just watch those. Um, now the match my style for, for those who are new to working with style, if you have, let's say, up to 2,000 words of your own writing, it will break it down and match. It'll it'll look for things that you personally write. So if you want to include something that you've written, like 2,000 words of your own writing, and put it in here, um, it will actually break down your writing style for you. 
So you, you just put that in 2000 words of your writing style, I'll hit next. Um, and I, I mean, I don't have, we could just, I mean, we could just simply pull it in. Um, maybe I could just put in something like this. It's going to be, it's not going to work as well. You know, you want to actually put in your fictional story, but you can hit next. It'll analyze it for you. Um, it'll analyze what it, it'll analyze that writing sample and then it'll go, it'll bring it down. So the tune, tone and the mood, um, it's an emotional atmosphere. Um, your POV is the perspective, descriptive style, um, is how you describe everything. And then you just hit next again. It'll compress it down into that 40, it'll compress it down into those 40 words. So in this, you can break it down and then just go ahead and hit that insert and it will go ahead and um, in here, it'll automatically import that into your style log. So if you wanna do the match my style, you can do it that way as well. Um, and the synopsis box, um, here is how to generate. So you just hit that generate synopsis. So it's going to feed, it's going to feed off of your brain dump. So like, again, it affects, these are the, what it affects. Your synopsis reads off of your brain dump. That's why you want as much as you can inside um, of your brain dump. So when it generates your synopsis, it's actually trying to bring in all of that information as possible. So <clears throat> Tomas, you ended up in my story somehow. Um, <laughs> so, you know, read through, this is now, this is the beginning of your story. So for me, as a, a creative writing coach, I would say this is now the part that you need to start editing. This is, if you want the AI to work best with you and come out with the best prose possible, this is where you'd start your editing. So now that you have your um, style and genre filled out, your synopsis, this is, excuse me for one second. So this is now the beginning, middle, and end of your story. Edit this until you like your story. So let's say pseudo write comes in and you go, I don't like what it gave me. There is a rewrite synopsis down here. You can give it new instructions and go, okay, I want more about the instrument and the curse behind the instrument. You know, so you just be like. <clears throat> so the focus of the story should be on the um cursed arc so let's say you put this in if you hit rewrite remember every time you hit this it does charge you credit so if there's just one sentence in here that you don't like just delete it you know don't don't keep using up credits to get it perfect if you can edit it manually do it but let's say in here like it only mentions the harp once i don't know i haven't read through this but let's say the focus isn't on the harp. Let's say the focus is just on Leo and I want it to be on that cursed object. So you can just hit rewrite. It'll rewrite that synopsis. Now, and with the focus, hopefully a more on the cursed harp and the history behind the harp itself. If you don't like it, like let's say I get through this and I'm like, well, I definitely don't like this any better. There's a history button right here. You can always bring back and re restore the one that you had previous. So that it has done. So, um, um, Tammy, quick question. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so you kind of, I think you sort of already answered it that I've been kind of ignoring the rewrite part and just going in and editing my synopsis the way I like. But sometimes I make really significant changes, and I'm worried yeah. that by not letting Pseudowrite make those changes, it's confusing the AI when I get to the chapter outline part. If that's not it the case, I'd love. I if, it may just be in my head. Otherwise, I would infinitely prefer to just fix it, you know, myself rather than use rewrite. I just wanted to know whether that makes a difference. 
No, um, I would say the only time you should reuse the rewrite button is if you were like, like, let's say it brings out the synopsis and you just hate it. Like you hate everything about that synopsis. It's not even close to the story you wanted. That's the only time I would hit that rewrite button. If you can okay, go good. through and edit what you want, it doesn't matter. The AI is not going to get mad at you. You guys have to remember that the AI, it's, it's just ones and zeros, you guys. There's no, there's no Terminator behind you. It's not going to get upset. <laughs> well, I was just either. worried more like it, it would get confused the more it's not what it's no. used to seeing. Okay, good. Thank you so no. much. Yes. So what's in here, like, let's say I just go, you just go through and you just, you just delete everything or like half of it because you're like, I don't like it. You rewrite the middle. The AI just now reads what you changed. It doesn't, it doesn't know what it, it spit out. It just basically put out what it thinks like it just follows the the prompting that you've gone through and what pseudo right behind the scenes has prompted it to do for this section and then now what it will do is things that are read from the synopsis so like in here <clears throat> the synopsis affects this so like the beef let's say or even the outline so when you get to your outline the synopsis it just goes back and reads all the changes that you made from that synopsis so make all the changes that you want now. It's better to do it now and edit it how you want it now. And don't be afraid to use that delete button. Don't be afraid to change it. What the AI gives you is not set in stone. It is just an idea. Think of it as kind of your writing assistant or like a, a, a I like to think of it personally as like a junior writer. It's really excited. It thinks it has a great story, but I know I can make it better. And that's what you, you're doing. Okay, so think of it as just like that junior writing assistant. It really is excited to help you, but it doesn't quite know what it's doing. So don't be afraid to edit and go in and fix what it's done. So after you've do, done your synopsis, we can generate characters. Now your characters is generated based on your synopsis. So you just hit that generate characters. It is only reading from your synopsis. Now, let's say in your brain dump, you extensively put in character bios, okay? It will not read from the brain dump. So remember that when you're getting this, it's not, it doesn't know what it, it doesn't know what it what what you put in your brain dump so when you look at this your characters doesn't read from the brain dump so let's say you did do extensive character bios personally i would include that in your synopsis so within this story bible or sorry within this document that i put in for you guys I put one of my favorite prompts. So um, I'm not sure if how familiar you guys are with um, Dramatica or um, Myers-Briggs personalities or the Enneagram personality types, um, but those are ones that I like to use. And so in here, it gives you a very basic paragraph of your characters. A struggling musician, dark, um, disheveled dark hair, by the way, disheveled will appear every time your character comes in so you may want to like get rid of that things like that you may want to remove a lean frame he's a dreamer passionate about music um same thing folk singer weathered face salt and pepper hair um she has caramel colored skin wavy dark hair and a warm smile you know things like you know they're they're good they're these are very good basic character descriptions but there's nothing very in-depth to those characters if you are a pantser like i am this is probably more than you would have ever put down when you started writing a novel so you are more than free to go ahead and use these character descriptions if you would like a deeper more in-depth character description um they are working currently on the character box to make it a little bit more in-depth they're trying to break it down 
in so that you can include things, not only just their physical description, but you can do occupation, backstories, um, include as many boxes as you want for characters that will become especially helpful for your protagonist, your love interest, and your antagonist. Those are usually, you know, are any major secondary characters. Um, some of those, like some of these descriptions are perfectly fine for some of the minor characters. You know, it's more than enough information you need. For me though, I like this one um, on this, a major character list. I like flaws and imperfections because I think that characters that have flaws are always better. Um, for each of the characters, um, I like to include the Myers-Briggs, the anagram type, astrology sign, an archetype, and then um, kind of their dialogue style. And Dramatica. If you guys know anything about Dramatica, um, it is one of the, it's, it's a great book. It's a great website. I included it here. Here's the website. Here's the book. Um, it, it is a breakdown of eight characters, eight main characters that usually fill your world. If you look at any major movie or book that usually includes these eight main characters. If you want to read more on it, go ahead and click those links. And the website's free. I think the book is on Amazon. It's not too expensive. Um, so this is a prompt I like to include. So you don't have to hit that. Um, you can include this, surprisingly. You can include this in your synopsis box because your character's box does read from the synopsis. So if you include this in your synopsis and then hit generate characters, it'll it should automatically include all of this. Or if you want, if you want to read through it first and see, you can also hit it in the rewrite characters and then just hit that rewrite button and include that prompt and not rewrite. And it'll rewrite those characters, hopefully including, and it looks like it did. That now has the anagram types. Um, the INFP is the Myers-Briggs. It's a um, Leo is now a Pisces and his, his archetype is the dreamer. He's also going to be the protagonist of the story. Usually the dramatical character types are at the bottom. So, you know, Leo will be the protagonist. Tomas will be the garden. Amelia will be the sidekick. Um, things like that. You know, and then the dialogue styles that included at the bottom. Um, so I can go ahead and like, if I wanted to, since this is all a part of Leo's, I just copy it and I just paste it up where Leo's information is. So that it's all just included in his whole paragraph. I think this gives a little bit more depth to the character, especially because now I'm including personality types. Um, he's stubborn and fiercely independent. He has a vulnerable side beneath a tough exterior. Like to me, that seems a little bit more depth to these characters. So if you guys want to use that prompt, please do adapt it to what you like. So if you're like, I don't care about anagram types or Myers-Briggs or archetypes. I just want the astrology sign, then, you know, delete. So that's included in that um, that document that I gave you guys. So don't, <laughs> excuse me, feel free to adapt the prompt as you need it. So um, I'm very, I'm very much about character development. I think characters drive your story. So don't feel like you have to just go with what they gave you in these. Um, you guys can always like go through and adapt your characters as needed. What characters need to support your protagonist? What characters are against your protagonist? The depth that you want to go into it, you know, and then um, don't, don't feel like you have to like stick with what they have. Um, again, um, I included in that document that I gave you guys kind of the cliches like piercing blue eyes appears a lot. So um, if you guys look in the beginner's guide back here, I included all the AI cliches that are in there. Um, it's at the very bottom underneath in documents, AI cliches to avoid. Um, piercing blue eyes is one of them. Warm brown eyes is one of them. Um, just Make sure that you're watching for those. Otherwise, people can might be able to pick out that you're using AI to write your stories. 
Um, also, I included so some of the names um, that AIs can give you. They've gotten better, but sometimes they become come like Jack and Sarah appear a lot, things like that. You know, I included websites that have really great names. Um, also in these, um, like the sci-fi ideas and the fantasy name generators, they can also make cities, city names and locations names for you as well. So if you end up with Willow Creek a lot, which is a common one, you guys can also go in there and that these fantasy names and that sci-fi ideas will also help with some of those locations. Um, so um, again, don't don't feel like you have to change to this. Also, like if you have an extensive character, like if you have a much more extensive character like description for your characters, and this one is also limited to only that 700 words. Um, so let's say, um, hopefully this will not become an issue once the new character boxes are out. And we will look at that new character box tomorrow. I'll, I'll show you guys what you, kind of what they're looking on because I'm a part of the beta group. I'll show you guys tomorrow in the 301 if you guys want um, kind of what they're hoping to come out with. Um, but um, don't feel like you're just stuck with these. Let's let's say you have this and you only have the 700 words, but you know that the, this chapter only has Leo, Tomas, and Amelia. Well, then go ahead and delete all of these character descriptions. So you can just delete all this. And that just freed up all of that space so that you can put a much more in-depth character descriptions for each one of those characters in the chapter. Then I would just go over here. I just create a Blake document. And I would honestly just paste all of your character descriptions that you really, really love, paste all of those character descriptions within that document. Because then that way, now you can just add in, um, oh my gosh, you guys, spelling and teaching at the same time is not my friend. Um, so now you have this, you have your just three character descriptions. You have a lot more space, a lot more words that you can use, and you can go much more in depth on those characters, especially relative to each one of those chapters. What's relative? What does what's needed to know? You know, if this chapter is based on a backstory, like let's say you're about halfway and you're like, now I have to go back and explain why Leo is the way he is. You know, he has a huge, let's say, abusive family grown up and and he has a, a this need for fame. Because he's always trying to make his father proud because he never. So let's say it's an entire backstory that needs to take place. So you wanted to include that within the character box. Then include that. But since it's not needed in any other chapter except this one, then that, now you can include that within this chapter. Um, so. In this one, so um, don't be afraid to change out your boxes again as needed per chapter or as needed as the story progresses. Um, and don't be afraid to use that rewrite. Again, no, each time that you use it, it does change it. And if you get panicked and you're like, oh, no, I did not mean to do that, there is that history button. You can go back and you can just always hit that restore and it'll bring back all that information for you. Pseudo writes really good, too. But if you can't find it, just let them know and they'll usually check in on it for you. Um, so now generating the outline. So this one is going to be a little bit more extensive. Um, so after you've done your characters, I gave you a prompt um, and then I gave you some ideas for that. And then to the dramatic and character archetypes, if you'd like to look through theirs, um, that's your character box. And then now we're going to look at the outline. So your outline, it has to match this format. It has to be act one followed by chapter one and the colon afterward. It, this needs to be the number one, not, um, it cannot be the Roman numeral one. So it can't be that large, the, you know, the capital I. Um, it has to be the actual number itself. In here, so like, let's say you already have your outline. You can just go ahead and hit that insert template and it'll insert that template for you so you can fill it out this way to make sure that it's actually filled out correctly. If you don't have an outline and you're going from scratch, we're going to look at the different outlines. 
I have a breakdown too. Um, in this, I also broke down how each one works and how each one is set up. Um, in here, there's it's great for novel length stories focusing on theme setting tropes for a particular genre. They also give examples of different stories, you know, like Sherlock Holmes, Lord of the Rings, you know, those kind of things. They're they're in each one of these. Now, novel outline, what I like about novel outline is it is based off of your genre. So if you're writing a mystery, it the novel outline will adapt that outline to a mystery. If you're writing a fantasy story, it'll adapt to writing a, a, a fantasy story or a romance. This that's one of the reasons I like novel outline. It's very unique in the way that it will look at genres and a typical outline for those genres, and then it will write that outline. So um, use novel outline, you know, if you're looking for a specific genre. The hero's journey. So this is your main protagonist. They're usually thrown into a different world. They go on a journey. They are transformed by that journey, and then they come back from that journey a changed person. So um, again, um, it gives examples, you know, from Hunger Games, The Matrix, and Star Wars. Those are great examples. Um, I also give the breakdown. The Hero's Journey is based off of Joseph Campbell's um, Hero with a Thousand Faces, um, the monomyth, those kind of things. He did an extensive study into stories and that the typical story for um, what people tell as the hero's journey. So it, this is a breakdown of that outline. If you guys want to read through that too, I did break it down um, that way as well. Um, Hollywood Beats is based off of Save the Cat. Um, so again, I did break that down to Hollywood Beats. Um, it's by Blake Snyder, and then there is a novel version by Jessica Brody. Um, this is the breakdown of it. Um, Pseudo Wright did a great job breaking it down. Um, it also is, uh, they also give examples of movies in it too, like Toy Story and um, Up and Forrest Gump. Ready? Um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, someone has a very good question. If we can go back to the character there, she's ask he or she asking if you do not change a character and in your character you only use a couple of them, what happens if the rest of the character will sue the right try to include them all? Um so <clears throat> that is a really great question yes it is <laughs> um, it, it yeah it depends so <clears throat> you'll see when we get to our beats like especially the chapter beats you will see um there are a few tricks to stop the ai from trying to bring in characters that aren't supposed to be there there's no there's no perfect answer for that question because some some of the models that are used so there are different models when you go to generate your beats there are different models um a lot of them are listed here um some of the models like to bring in characters that are not in your outline that are not in the beats for that chapter um you have to the best and easiest way is when we get to beats, I'll show you guys, you need to get rid of the pronouns for one. You need to be specific of which characters are in which scene. You know, AI, they say when you put he, she, um, they, um, him, her, it doesn't always know who that, who you are talking about, if that makes sense. Um, so if you, if you are using, um, like, if you, if in your outline you're just using generic he, she, well, there's there's a lot of he's in here. You know, like Victor and Raphael and Tomas and Leo. So when you have all of those, let's say, it can go, well, I don't know which he you're referring to, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull in Tomas. So just you have to be very careful when you're prompting your AI 
you have to be very careful to make sure it knows who you are talking about and what you want to happen in the seat with who and with which setting. I don't know if that helps answer that question or not. It, it did for me, especially I'm remembering yesterday, you guys provided the list of what every engine does, tends to do or not do. So it might be a little upfront planning on my part, but connecting that document with the one you're providing now, to me, seems like it would give me a good prediction of what to expect. And as you said, the other tips like taking out the pronouns and using the names every time. So thank you. Yeah. It, and, and it really is like, you have to remember, AI is not a mind reader. So even though in your mind, you're like, I know this scene has these people. I know it takes place in this setting. I know I want these things to happen. And you put in just a generic thing, hoping that the AI will get it, it won't. So if there are specific things that you want, sometimes it's almost easier to just type it in yourself. And so like, I, and I can show you guys, um, so I'm going to go back to the outline really quick and then I'm and then I'll sh I'll generate some of the outlines and then I'll show you guys how to kind of beef up these outlines to make them a little bit better. So story circle uh, this is this is one of the best ones if you have some a character that starts in one place and you want them to come back to that same place after going off on an adventure. Um such as like Dorothy and the tornado when she goes into Wizard of Oz. It's a great example of a, a character who is taken from the world, goes on that little journey and then comes back. Um, you know, so things like that. Um, this is also my favorite one. So if you are a short story writer, um, this is also my favorite one for short stories. It's, it can be quick, it can be a fast story. And you don't wanna overwhelm your readers when you're doing a short story. You want you know, limited amount of characters, limited amount of plot. And that's why Story Circle is really good is because it gives that beginning, middle and end, but it can also, it doesn't, it, it's not an epic change to your character. And so like Hero's Journey, you can use for short stories, but it's very hard to like get that full journey in, in a short story, as opposed to the Story Circle, which is just a quick circular narrative. So in it, if we look at this, so if you look at it, it's, it was actually created by Dan Harmon, who is the writer for Rick and Morty. And so it basically starts here. The character wants something. They go on that. They search for it. They find it. Um, they pay a heavy price for it, and then they just come back to where they're at. So it's it's actually really basic. It's a simple story structure. So, um, you know, you can follow the story circle, and it's really good for creating the short story. So if you're a short, short story writer, or if you're, again, this is a really great one, too. When you're learning pseudo write, start with a short story. And this is a really great outline to start with that short story. And then the romance outline is obviously this is meant for romance. And so like um, most romance outlines, the, most romance novels follow this outline. It's basically your two main characters, your, her your hero or your heroine, or if you write for the LGBT community, it can also be your two heroines or your two heroes or whatever you have going on. Um, so just remember that your romance outline has those two characters going on this romantic journey together. And um, speaking of romance, if you are doing that and you want to change POVs, let the AI know. I want this chapter. This is really good to include in your style box. Um, every other chapter is written from, you know, this, this chapter will be written from Leo's point of view. So all the odd numbers are written from Leo's point of view and all the even numbers, let's say, are written from Amelia's point of view. So those two are the two love interests. You want the chapters to switch out. You have to let pseudo write that you know that you want that. Just because it goes to the romantic outline doesn't necessarily mean it knows which one to do. So for this, I'm going to just stick with the novel outline, the basic one. It will read. It'll read from the genre in this case. So in this case, you have to have your genre filled out. Any of the other outlines you don't. 
Um, but for the novel outline to work, you have to have your genre filled in. So just generate that outline. And I will show you guys um, kind of different ways to play with the outline. Um, <clears throat> I also have a video on Discord on just outlines and how to kind of help your outlines. Um, <clears throat> so feel free to watch that video to help improve your outline. Um, Nicole and I have also been doing a series and we did also cover some of the outline stuff as well. So please feel free to go through and watch those videos if you guys want a little bit more extensive look at the outline. So <clears throat> novel outline, you can see here, it has my act one and then my chapter one. It gave me a setting. Um, so it has, uh, it, it's in the um, city, it's in Leo's apartment. Um, and, the, and then it has a summary of your, what, like, basically is what's going to happen. This is in chapter one, you know. So Leo is a struggling musician. He plays in a dive bar. He feels increasingly frustrated and dreams about being famous one day. His girlfriend, Sophia, is trying to be supportive, but she gets tired of his constant, like, his emotional instability and his need for this fame. Leo receives a phone call and his grandfather, Tomas, has passed away. So actually, this isn't bad for chapter one. It'll introduce Leo in his normal world. It gives um, it gives you an idea of his who his girlfriend is. And then it, obviously, it'll have a little bit of tragedy with Tomas being passed away. Um, in it, um, the next one is the lawyer's office. And it's the reading of Tomas's will. And Leo and Sophia attend the reading. Um, he inherits an, um, one of the ancient harps. He feels um, conflicted about accepting the instrument. So for chapter two, I would say, like, it's interesting. I don't know if that's a full chapter two, if that makes sense. That's not a lot of information to fill an entire chapter. That is a lot of reading of a will and could be quite boring to your poor, um, like, your poor readers who are going, I didn't need to hear that entire well for a chapter. <coughs> you kind of want it to get started into the story. So maybe I want to include this chapter three. Like, so let's say, let's go ahead and include the two together. So I'm going to combine this. So I want to include this so that there's a second setting. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and just delete that. So let's combine the two. They go to the will, and now he also gets the harp, and there is, um, he learns that the harp actually has potential to make his, the people who listen to it to suddenly feel his emotions. So, if you guys noticed, I did just get rid of my chapter two. Or, sorry, I did just get rid of my chapter three and combined it with chapter two. This right here now becomes my chapter three, whether or not I change the number. So this is chapter two. I don't, there is no, there is no number that says chapter three colon, but this now becomes my chapter three. So if you guys look at my whole outline, there's 22 chapters. But now when I go to generate, like, so now here, now the fun part begins, you have it here. It's only showing I have 21, but there's 22 chapters total. So just remember that if you change the numbers, it does affect how many chapters you actually have. So it does not actually see the number. So this does not actually mean chapter four anymore. This is actually chapter three. Do you have to change those numbers? No. If you're like me and you're going to confuse yourself if you don't change it, I would go ahead and change it. So for me, I would probably go through and start changing all those. But you don't actually have to go through and manually change them if you don't want to. For me, I just, I get confused, so I would probably go through and change those numbers just for myself, but no. If you don't want to change them, if you're like, nope, I'm good, I just want it to generate stuff, that's fine. So let's say you're, you're reading through this and you're going, okay, I really like this outline, but I feel like there's not enough romance. So you can go ahead and hit that, you know, include more romance in here and hit that rewrite button. Or if you want and you're looking for an entire like I feel like pseudo write is really good at giving you your main story 
I, I feel that it's, it kind of has a hard time giving a secondary plot to your story. And I go over this in the outlines video as well. So I'm just going to touch on it here. Feel free when you get into your outlines that if you're going, there's not enough meat to this. Like, I feel like it has an overview of the main story, but there's not a secondary story or there's not that B story or that C story. There's, I want more mystery. I want a little bit more on their relationship. I want more romance. Don't be afraid to go back through. Start at your brain dump. Go through with a genre. Change all of this up and change it to just focus. Like, let's say you just want the focus to be on Leo and Amelia. You know? Go through, change it, and then generate an entire new outline that is entirely based on the romance. So go to your romantic outline. And I haven't changed my brain dump and synopsis so it's going to give me just so you guys know it's going to give me something very similar if you guys want to do this properly go through and change your brain dump genre style synopsis change all of that and then hit that generate romance outline because um then you can go through and you can do what is called kit bashing and you can go through and go okay i really like this part of the outline and I want to include this and you just start combining the two together and so um you can read through it and I would just what I would do is create a new document copy and paste the outline that you like over and then just start taking in what you want to include more so um in this um so it's generating this I'll just add a new document just a blank one um and then we'll go back because it's just going to generate it. Okay, so I canceled it. Sorry, I was I I canceled it because I was going through. But let's say you like this outline. And you just want to copy it over. And you're like, you know what? This is the outline I want it to follow. I just don't feel like it's deep enough. Go back to that outline. And then I'm going to go into my history. I'm going to go back to the other one that we had and restore it. And let's say I really like this first one. So I want to keep this first one. But I'm going to look at this one. So chapter one, Ordinary World, Struggling Musician. But let's say I want to add those two in together. Okay. You can combine these two, the things that you like. So his evidence for music, his, um, his the passion for music is evident. So let's say I want to include that. You can include this in here. And in this, once you get this all set up and you get it the way that you want it, copy it back and then bring it back in and then change it so that you're not actually have that entire thing going on. Manon, yes. Yeah, someone is asking if there's a possibility to tell Sudor write how many words in the books you want. So basically I would say every chapter has so many words generate. Can you show that? Um, I don't think there is a specific way to limit how many words that pseudorite can produce. Um, am I wrong, Manon? Yeah, I would think that you can put <laughs> a, a prompt into the top of your outline to say each chapter you don't want more than so many words or even on top of the beats. So she can limit yeah. the number of chapter to get everything under 60,000 words. Yeah, so um, like, yeah, you can, you can put here, you can, you can try and put um, limit to um, 3,000 words for like the first chapter. You could try and do it this way. Um, the, the Probably the best thing to do, and I will show you guys this, I'm probably not going to get to the actual beats themselves today, but we're doing one, we're doing the 301 tomorrow, so I was going to cover beats, pros, and then I was going to show you guys the new like characters and world building box tomorrow. And uh, when, when you guys come to the 301 tomorrow, I'll show you. You can try and add this prompt in too. But yeah, you can add in prompts here. It will help pseudo write try and limit it. But that doesn't mean that, that it's what it's going to be limited to. Um, pseudo write has its own prompts behind the scenes. And sometimes those prompts can cause it to go over and override some of the prompts that you put in, including things like this. But I'll show you guys tomorrow when we get to the beat section, 
how to see how many words approximately it will generate for you and how you can limit those words. Um, don't get stuck on word limits. Like if you're like, I'm writing the epic fantasy, it has to be over 100,000 words. To me, especially as a writing craft, you know, teacher, I would tell you guys, don't worry about your word count. Unless that you are trying to work with a specific publisher who requires a word count, I would say I wouldn't worry about your word limits. Um, you just want to create a good story. And if you have a publisher, a good publisher, that a lot of times they won't care about your word count either. If your story is good enough, they'll publish it anyway. There, there's very few times that you have to be stuck on a word limit. Um, but I'll show you guys tomorrow, especially in the beat section, how to see um, how those how to limit those words if you guys want as well. Um, but don't be afraid to edit your outline. And like I said, watch your numbers because like because I deleted that chapter three, this now becomes chapter three. Those kind of things. I also give you guys a lot of information here too in in this document in this uh, story bible about the different things. Um, about the different boxes and what you should need for it. Um, so since we are coming up at the top of the hour, do we have any questions about the boxes within Story Bible? Okay, well, I just want to say then thank you everyone for coming to class. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.